the Delta V budget. Let's discuss a list of velocity losses that must be accounted for uh, in order to size the propulsion system of your launch vehicle so that you can achieve the desired orbit. The Saturn V launch vehicle was the vehicle that sent men to the moon and was uh, the uh, largest launch vehicle in terms of payload ever built. It also had a great safety record. All ten flights uh, were successful. This vehicle <coughs> is about 360 feet tall, or 111 meters, and carried uh, 285,000 pounds of payload into uh, low Earth orbit, or LEO, and that's about 140 English tons, or 129 metric tons. It sent about 50 tons uh, to the moon. <coughs> the uh, first stage, which is this section, burned kerosene and liquid oxygen, and <coughs> that gave an ISP, or specific impulse, of 264 seconds, approximately. The second and third stage burn liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for a higher ISP value of 435 seconds or so. Notice that I'm using sometimes the um, <coughs> U.S. customary units of <coughs> foot-pounds seconds, and at other times I'm using the standard uh, <coughs> international uh, units, SI units, of uh, kilograms, meters, and seconds. Most of the calculations we will do will be in the uh, international system of units. This uh, launch vehicle uh, took the Apollo capsule, and uh, there's the command module, along with the service module and the lunar excursion module, up to an altitude of 176 kilometers, which is about 110 miles for the uh, first orbit, the circular orbit around the Earth, before it was then sent on to the moon. Okay, so now let's consider the issues of sending a launch vehicle into orbit. <clears throat> and uh, so we'll look at um, <clears throat> the problem uh, in XY coordinates. So here we have the downrange distance, uh, and we have the altitude, and here we have a rocket with the thrust, and this rocket has to get up to the right altitude and hit the desired velocity. And uh, this is a, a, a difficult problem uh, when you look at, you know, what's the best trajectory such that you use the least amount of propellant to uh, take a given payload into orbit. In order to analyze this very complicated problem, uh, we have to use some simplifying assumptions. That means we want to turn this into a math model. So before I go into that, let me just indicate with this little model, you know, what we're trying to do. We start with a rocket uh, <clears throat> on the pad, and <clears throat> it's launched pr pretty much straight up for some time. And part, part of the reason for that is we're trying to get out of the atmosphere, which produces drag. And as we get to higher altitudes, we start steering the rocket such that in the end, it's traveling downrange. It may even be steered such that it's pointing slightly downward near the end of the uh, burn so that it finally ends up uh, with a velocity uh, along the horizontal. That's our desired speed. And it's a vector, so it's not just the magnitude, uh, but it's also the direction.
So, in order to uh, solve problems like this, we need to create a math model, that is, turn our problem into mathematics. And <clears throat> usually we try to get away with the simplest model that we can, uh, so that the calculations are not difficult. But this is a big uh, issue whenever you're doing engineering, is what, what level of math, how much detail do you need to put in, how complicated do things have to be, how accurate do you need the numbers to be. So we'll start out with a pretty simple model. Uh, we're, we'll assume that the thrust is always along the current velocity vector, V, so that the forces of thrust, weight, and drag can be depicted as in this free body diagram. So here we have the rocket. Here's the current velocity vector. The drag is always in the opposite direction of the velocity. So there's a drag force. The thrust is, we're assuming, along the velocity direction, although that is not always the case in real systems. And then we have the weight here. We're also assuming planar motion. This is a simplification. Keep our equations uh, relatively simple. Notice that we have uh, the Greek letter here, gamma. This is an angle between what's called the local horizontal plane and the direction uh, to the velocity vector. And so that is spelled G-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, and it's written as, as this symbol. Uh, by the way, capital gamma would be written this way. If we add up the forces along the velocity uh, direction and using Newton's law, which is F equals ma, a is the uh, time rate of change of velocity. And so we have on the right t minus d, the thrust, which is in the direction of the velocity, uh, <clears throat> minus d, the drag, which is in the opposite direction of the velocity, and then minus a component of the weight, which is along sine of gamma. So we're, um, <clears throat> if we take the weight here and look at its component um, along V, it's this distance here. So we have W uh, times sine of gamma. And it's um, in, in this direction. <clears throat> so it's negative. <clears throat> 